Now to Australian company Goodman Fielder, which owns many Aussie brands, including Helga's Bread, Meadow Lee and White Wings, was just the subject of a takeover bid by Singapore-based Wilmer International. Now, share prices rose off the back of the news, but the bid was rejected by the company for being too low. But there are suggestions Wilmer International may try a hostile takeover instead. For more on exactly what this means, finance guru Scott Haywood joins us again from Federation Square. Scott, run us through briefly what's happened so far and what the impact would be on Australian workers. Well, good morning, guys. And yes, can you believe it? A bread company wanting more dough. Like the irony of that. Um, so effectively, yesterday their shares went up 18% to 65 cents. Actually closed just under 65 cents. But they did reject the $1.27 billion from the Wilmar Consortium. Now, I suppose you could say that that might seem like a good price, 65 cents. But in light of the other major takeovers we've had in Australia, it's actually a little low. David Jones's share price went up over 30% after South African Woolworths made a bid at that for about $4, which we're expecting both the board to accept, which they have, and then shareholders to accept. And of course, Warnable Cheese and Butter, which is in a similar sector uh, to, well, I suppose you could say, Goodman Fielder in food and dairy, um, their shares soared from over $4 to around about $9.40 when they were eventually sold to Saputo, which is a Canadian-based dairy. So I suppose you could say there could be a little bit more to go in the stock. However, it is a very interesting business. They've got a lot of brands and they haven't been a very good, I suppose, they haven't been a market darling at all. So it is a tough business to buy. So the shares actually did fall under 65 cents yesterday, which reflects that they may not be a bid. But I'm not surprised that the, I suppose you could say the board rejected it. The other thing to make of note is that this is a foreign company. Now, what that means is that when a foreign company makes a bid on an Australian company, they need a foreign investment review board approval, which is effectively the government. So if the board rejected of Goodman Fielder, it's very unlikely the foreign investment review board are going to accept it. So the price will need to be higher and they do need the board's approval. Scott, what does this hostile takeover mean for Aussie jobs? Well, it's not necessarily a hostile takeover just yet. A friendly takeover is when the board say, yes, we're happy with the share price and we'll take it. But uh, and a hostile takeover is when the board say no and they keep pursuing and keep pursuing, which is very unlikely for a foreign business to be able to do that. So the good thing is for, say, something like a Warnable Cheese and Butter, when Bega were bidding for them, a lot of people thought that that might cost jobs because of the synergy between the two dairies. Also, when Meyer made a bid at uh, David Jones, they thought that might cost jobs. But sometimes when overseas businesses do, in fact, buy Australian businesses, it can actually mean that jobs are safe and jobs are kept and in some cases jobs are grown. Now, Scott, you've got a good financial brain on your head. We just spoke a little bit about uh, Tony Abbott's proposed budget levy. Uh, what's your gut about that? Well, look, the flood levy that uh, the Rudd and Gillard government introduced was very unpopular. Of course, that was only 0.5% of uh, our accessible incomes and only up to, and obviously we didn't know about it before it happened in an election. What we've now seen is Tony Abbott make some pretty big promises about no increased taxes, no, he didn't say no increased levies, which will be a sort of disclaimer. Uh, I think what we've got is a problem where we have far too much debt. And the old certainty in life used to be death and taxes. Well, now Australia has got death, taxes and debt. And to get out of that, we're going to have to pay it off. And I think he might have to come out and say that, you know, maybe do for what your country, what the country does for you. And we all might have to put a little bit more into our pockets. But it is very difficult. We're seeing high living costs, high electricity and gas prices. Of course, rates are only going up. And of course, on the 1st of July as well, the Medicare levy sneaks up, which no one's discussed. But yeah, May 3rd will certainly be an interesting night. Scott, there seems to be a lot of ob obsessive thoughts or obsession about returning our budget to a surplus. Considering people are doing it so tough at the moment, do you think we should be talking about increasing taxes just to return the budget to surplus? We seem to be going too hard too soon. Yeah, I actually agree with that, Natasha. I think that we are going too hard too soon if we do start to increase taxes. The one thing that is off the table that Tony Abbott did say was that the GST wouldn't be touched until if he was fortunate enough to get a second term as Prime Minister. Uh, from my point of view, I don't think we're anywhere near surplus, and the numbers that could be thrown around could be $50 billion of extra debt that we've accumulated, uh, which does need to be paid off. Of course, that can cost Australians up to $100 million a day just in interest, and that's like a, a credit card at 20%, so that's the last thing we want. So I think you're right. I think we don't want to go too hard too soon, but sometimes in the first budget of a, a Prime Minister or, a, or a, a government, they can do things pretty hard, sort of make us have a bit of pain, and then as they come out of, say, their first two, one or two years, they then ease the pain as they try and get our votes. <laughs> it's all about winning votes. <laughs> That's right. Thanks, Scott. Scott, thanks for your time there. $40 billion, it's a big on, you guys. hole in the budget, isn't it? But, you know, $12 billion on 
58 jet fighters, to another $12 billion to maintain them. It's $24 billion, $5.5 billion on a paid parental scheme. That's almost $30 billion. That could probably fix a little hole there. I'm no mathematician. No. I'm no economist. <laughs> but um, maybe we should have that discussion.